In this video we have two variables x and y which represent experimental measurements of values 9 and 6 respectively. Being experimental measurements they will be subject to measurement uncertainty and we're told that the, the uncertainty in x is given by a standard deviation of 0.7 and in y this is a standard deviation uncertainty of 0.5. We can combine these values mathematically very easily we can take the sum of these values just by adding the contents of B2 and B3. So 9 and 6 is 15. Similarly, we can take the difference between these values. 9 minus 6 is going to give us 3. We could try multiplying the values. 9 multiplied by 6. Would give us 54. We could take the ratio of the two measurements, the value of 9 divided by 6 of 1.5, and then we could raise x to the power 3, which in this case would be equal to x, and the power in Excel is up arrow to the power 3, 729. However, the question that we have here is we know the uncertainty in each of the individual values. What is the uncertainty in these combined values? And we will do this here experimentally by simulating the selection of values for x and y. Assuming, for example, for x, that we must take a value from a normal distribution of values with a mean value of 9 and a standard deviation of 0.7. And we can do this using a function in Excel. So we can go to function and we can select statistical functions. And the function we want is based on a family of functions with relation to the normal distribution. And we want norm.invert. The mean of the distribution is the value in B2. The standard deviation is the uncertainty in C2 and we want to select the data randomly from this population of values so we will use the function rand and open close brackets and we can press OK. So now we have our function in the function bar and a randomly selected value in the target cell F2. Because it is a randomly selected value, if we press F9 in Excel, it will take another randomly selected value. So we press F9, and we now get a value of 9.76. So this is a different randomly selected value from a normal distribution with a mean of 9 and a standard deviation of 0.7. So we press F9 again, 8.48. 7.97, 8.36. It is possible to enter the function in a variety of ways. It would have been possible just to type this function in as it is shown directly into the function bar. An alternative is we can go to the target cell, enter equals. We remember perhaps that the function is something to do with normal. And this prompts us with a variety of options. We know that it's norm inverse. It then prompts us with what are the uh, values we have to put into the argument for this function. We have to start with random, open and close brackets, then comma. We need the mean value, which is in cell B2, then comma, and the standard deviation, which is in cell C2, close brackets. And again, we have the same function and a randomly selected value. And in anticipation of the future calculation, when we're going to copy by, by dragging this function across to other columns, we will want the function to continue to refer to the same initial columns for the mean and standard deviation, B2 and C2. So in this function, we want B to remain fixed. And we do that by putting a dollar sign in front of it. 
and we want C to remain fixed for the reference to standard deviation. So we'll put a dollar sign in front of that. We also want to take a randomly selected value for Y. So we go to our function here, point to the bottom right hand corner and get a small cross and holding the left mouse button down, we can drag that formula, copy the formula to the next row. So now we're taking a random selection from the normal distribution with a mean value of B3 and a standard deviation of C3. So we now have randomly selected values for X and Y, including the possibility of their experimental variation. We can calculate very quickly all these combinations of X and Y because we can just highlight the calculations. We can then copy all of these functions for which we could right click copy and then we could paste the same relative calculations into the F column by going to F5, right click and simply paste. These calculated values in column F all refer to the values of X and Y in the same column in rows 2 and 3. And we can see how the calculated values will change for different random selections of X and Y by pressing F9 in Excel. And each time we get a new set of combined values, for example, the sum may be 15.75 or 14.38. And we could get an idea of how the variations in X and Y will create variations in the combined values by repeatedly pressing F9. However, it will take a long time before we get a good idea of the spread of experimental variations. But we will do this in Excel by repeating this random calculation in a thousand columns. And we will do that by highlighting all of these functions. And we will now copy by dragging the highlighted cells to a thousand columns to the right. So we get a small cross at the bottom right of the selection and now we drag it in Excel to get a total of a thousand calculations. We can see from the counter we entered in row one that we now have a thousand different random calculations, each giving values for the sum, the difference, the multiplication, the ratio and the power. We wish now to see what is the variation across the thousand calculations. So starting with the sum, we go into C5, which will be the uncertainty in this sum, and we will calculate this by taking the standard deviation of our values. So we will use the sample standard deviation, and we can see here it is expecting the argument to define the range, and so the range will go from cell F5 and we know that it goes as far as column ALQ and that will also be 5 so close brackets so that has taken the standard deviation of a thousand values and given us a value of 0.869 we can calculate this the standard deviation for all the other calculations by simply copying this function down here so we, we can now see that we have standard deviation uncertainties in all of these values. It will also be useful to look at the relative uncertainties in these values. And we will calculate the relative percentage uncertainties. And to do that, we will say equals, and it's going to be a percentage. So we will multiply our calculation by 100. And the relative uncertainty is the absolute uncertainty u divided by the actual value, which would be in B2 for this case. So the relative uncertainty in x is the standard deviation divided by the absolute value multiplied by 100. So a 0.7 absolute uncertainty in 9 gives a relative uncertainty of 7.78%. We can calculate the relative uncertainties for all of our values directly just by
copying this function down straight away. We can get rid of this unnecessary value here. So now we can see how absolute uncertainties combine and how percentage uncertainties combine. So looking at this data, we see that if we either add or subtract, we take the sum or the difference, the absolute uncertainties are pretty much the same. So 8.57.889, even when we take different random selections, these two values are very similar. We can also see that when it comes to either the multiplication or the division, it is the relative uncertainties which remain the same. And even when we take new random selections, the uncertainties for multiplication and division stay the same if we take the relative uncertainties. When we come to a power, we're taking x to the power 3. So the relative uncertainty in x is about 8. The relative uncertainty of x to the power 3 is about 24, which is about three times the relative uncertainty in x. So for uncertainties in power values, you need to, to multiply the relative uncertainty in the individual value, in this case about 8, by the power raised, which is 3, giving a relative uncertainty, in this case, of 24%.